How's it going everyone? This is Wenbo. Today we are going to talk about my render settings. Since I got a lot of questions asking how I set up my Blender, here you go. This is a video. I want to make it clear, this entire video is talking about the render setting to render the best one single frame, which is the image, inside Blender, not animations. If you're looking for render settings for animations, sorry, this tutorial is not for you. This is the entire process, how to do this step by step. Without further ado, let's get started. Now we're inside Blender, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the render properties, click that. As you can see here, the first thing you're gonna do is the render engine. The cycle is the one that you wanna use for photorealism. Render. I rarely use EVs and sometimes I render some masks I using the workbench. The cycles is going to be my default render engine. So no question about it. It seems common sense for device. If you have a powerful GPU on your PC, you should use that. But a lot of beginners, they just don't have it. But if you do have a good GPU, making sure you choose the GPU compute. This is not going to improve your image quality, but it's gonna save you quite a bit of time when you're doing renders, right? when you have a good GPU. So the next thing we're gonna go is go to the edit and go to the preferences. As you can see here, we have the system down here and it would choose the system and have quite a bit the render device. If you have a decent GPU, making sure you select underneath here. If you have older version of GPU, which is not under the OptiX, you're gonna choose the CUDA. But anyway, I just picked the one top one for my GPU and I'm good for that. And making sure you go down here to check the auto save preferences and now you're good to go. Next, we are going to do the sampling, okay? So we go to the sampling down here. You can see here, we have a viewport and render, okay? So these are two separate things. The viewport is talking about where we're seeing right here. So as long as if I'm moving things around, you can see here if I'm in with these numbers, you can see they are rendering the samples according to what I set up too. So this is the viewport. The render is talking about the final images that we are going to render after we hit F12, okay? For the viewport, I typically just leaving as default setup, I believe, and this is the number I do, and it works very well. But one thing, a lot of people ask me, why don't you use the denoise when you viewing the viewport? So if I can show you, watch what's gonna happen if I'm hit the denoise, and yeah, everything's getting denoised quite a bit, but everything looks a little bit smooth. And while testing the renders later, it doesn't really render the same result. I just don't like the feeling when I'm looking at these denoise images. So typically when I'm doing my setup and I'm testing, I simply just check off the denoise while on my viewport. However, on the render settings, I always have the denoise checked on because this denoiser's filter is really good when you render the image and after render the images out i'm actually adding some noise back in the photoshop into my render and here's the, my render settings and this is also the default numbers but the maximum sample i just picked 200. i don't think the default settings i think is 4000 something it doesn't really make a whole lot different and for the 200 it works very well if you really want to get in a little bit higher quality images 400 i think that would be the highest i can go for me the 200 is works the best when i'm doing the renders I have good quality images and also not a whole lot of time to render okay so this is my render sampling settings for my blender after doing the sampling and i close that and i'm just scrolling down all these settings i don't touch and for the film which is this is really nice this is the transparent setting. Usually what this use is for HDR image. If you follow my channel and knowing my lighting stuff, for the film, I typically enable the transparent after I'm loading HDRI. Well, some of you guys ask me uh, quite a bit, how do you use HDRI? And I do have a video talk about how to do that. But typically for my lightings, I usually use my light. Uh, instead of HDRI. HDRI is just going to be my temporary lighting solutions and uh, HDRI lighting is never going to be the key light for my scene. So to enable transparent, when you're having a scene without enable the transparent, you can see here, this looks very dark. If you do the transparent, it will look everything transparent. If, of course, if you have a HDRI image built in, I wanna show you right here, go to the shading tab 
and if we have HDRI uh, lighting hooked in, you can see here, if I'm not enable this, hit Q, I can see that the environment for the HDRI image. So this is not something I want. So I even put this in the quick menu so I can just quickly disable that, okay? I'm just going to disconnect this HDRI image, okay? Go back to the layout, come back, and uh, making sure you check the transparent when you after you apply HDRI image, okay? If you use this function very often, you can actually just use in this right click and and adding to the quick menu. Right now it's removed, so adding to the quick menu. So when you hit Q, and then you will have this and you can quickly do that. You don't see any difference here because I unhooked the HDRI image, but I just want to show you the function like this. This is something that usually I use under the render setting. Okay, then let's keep going. So the performance, as you can see here, we already have a quite a bit default setting here. I don't touch these. And for the new latest version, I believe this is the default settings. Because I'm using GPU to render my images, and for the tile size, 2048 is the perfect size for this. I believe uh, Blender Guru has talked about this in one of his videos a long time ago, but this works very well. And everything I just set to default, the auto detect, so that works very well for me for the performance. Okay, let's keep going. For the color management, the setting for the display device is definitely default sRGB. And uh, for the views, I usually use a filmic. The view transform for me, it looks like the color profile for me inside Blender. The filmic is the largest color space that I can actually have inside Blender. So I choose the filmic. And then for the look, it feels like the additional filters. If you are also a Fujifilm camera users, you will know what I'm talking about. It's more like a film stimulation for me. For this look, I chose the very high contrast as my uh, filter over here. And uh, the exposure and gamma, everything just leave there. And uh, sequencers and stay with sRGB. So this is all my settings under the render properties, okay? So now let's go to the output property. As you can see here, first, we are going to choose the resolutions of format. If you're not going with the square format, you can actually click here. Here's quite a bit of a preset that you can just simply choose, you know, whichever you want. And if you want to get in a square format, you can just click and drag and do a like 5,000, whatever number you put it in, then this is going to give you a resolution that is going to be a square format. One fun fact, if you're also a photographer in your real life, you will realize these resolutions are so expensive in cameras. I pay so much money to buy a media format cameras getting higher resolutions. You can just simply type in inside Blender. This is one of the reasons I love Blender so much because you can get the high resolution for free inside Blender. This is just crazy. Okay, let's go down here for the output setting. For the file format, there's a count of images format, but the one I chose is the TIFF, which is the best format for one single image because there is quite a room for TIFF file to manipulating and doing a lot of work in the post-processing inside Photoshop. So I chose TIFF and you can see here the color, black and white, RGB, RGB alpha. So this is the one I always choose. So RGBA and the color depth. For the color depth, for most of images I'm dealing with, they are usually are 8 bits and it has a good amount of color dynamic. It should be pretty good. But for my medium format camera from Fujifilm, I actually set up my camera on 16 bits because they have a huge dynamic range in the medium format camera. But for those of you who are not into photography a lot, 16 bits images are way too much for a simple image. 8 bits is totally enough for you guys. The reason I choose 16 bits Sometimes because I'm shooting images using my medium format camera while doing photo compositing inside of Photoshop. I want to make sure the color depths are the same. They're synced. So it's easily to manipulating them together and compositing them. When I final export the image, I'm going to convert to the 8 bits images and then to export a lower size image. So that's the only time I use 16 bits. But majority of the time, 8 bits is totally enough. For the compression, and then you can just simply set to none, 
and then the other things I don't do that a whole lot. For the color management, for the color format, I just gonna pick the photo scene. And this is everything I set up for my image render. That's pretty simple, straight. After you setting all these inside Blender, you're gonna go to the default and save start file. After you hit that, everything you set up inside Blender, this render setting is gonna stay here every time when you open Blender and you don't need to do it again. So this is everything I wanna share in this video and thank you so much for watching. Of course, if you wanna spend some time to play with this file and uh, see how I set up the rest of these Blender, and then you can actually become a one of my Patreon or you can purchase this Blender file separately on my Gumroad page. All the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next time. Bye.